Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Welcome back to Lecture 3 for Chapter 1. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about issues related to existence and uniqueness of solutions of ODEs. So first of all, given an ODE, does it have solutions? And here is an example of an ODE that has no solutions. So the left-hand side is greater than or equal to zero. The right-hand side is strictly negative. So whatever function I plug into the left-hand side, it's not going to solve this equation. Admittedly, this is a bit of a contrived example, but it is an example. But let's consider a more realistic example. x dot equals ax, so a first-order system on the real line. a is a constant, a real number. The solution of this equation is given by x of t is another constant times e to the at. Okay, so this equation has an infinite number of solutions because c can take on any real value. But if we ask what is the value of the solution at time zero, we see that it is c. And if we plug this into the equation, we see that at time zero, we only have a unique solution passing through x at zero. So in other words, given any point in phase space for this ODE, there's only a unique solution passing through that point, only one solution. Now here's another example, one-dimensional autonomous, which has an infinite number of solutions satisfying the same initial condition. So x dot equals 3x to the 2 thirds. The initial condition is x of 0 equals 0. So one solution of this equation is x equals 0. Plug that into the left-hand side, into the right-hand side, and you know, that's a solution. It satisfies the equation. But you can verify that 110 is also a solution for a greater than 0 any a greater than zero. So a being greater than zero is crucial. So we see that this is also a solution, and substitute it in to verify yourself, also a solution of the equation satisfying the same initial condition, x of zero equals zero. Okay, but here's a little hint about what's to come. The vector field is not differentiable at the initial condition where non-uniqueness holds. Okay. If the equation has a unique solution at time zero, for example, for how long will that solution exist? And what does not exist mean? Well, here's an ODE, x dot equals x squared, x is in the real line. We consider a general initial condition, x of 0 equals x naught. The solution for that ODE is given by this equation. And what you see is that it's unique, given an x naught, we have a unique function satisfying it. But we see from looking at the denominator that at t equal 1 over x naught, the solution is infinite. It blows up. It doesn't exist. So we see that that time of non-existence, t equal 1 over x naught, depends upon the initial condition. x naught equals 0, or x equals 0, is a solution that exists for all time. But any other solution exists for a finite time. Non-existence means blow up, go to infinity. So there's a general theorem for the general form of the equation that we're considering. And it says that if the vector field f of x and t, it, its derivatives exist, derivative with respect to x and time, these are sufficient conditions. You can weaken them, but for our purposes, we just need sufficient conditions because they're going to let us do everything we want to do. We want the vector field to be differentiable. OK, 
because computing derivatives is, it will be very important for us. So if the vector field is differentiable in both x and in t, and the derivative is continuous, then we know the theorem says that given any initial condition, there is a unique solution of this equation that satisfies that initial condition at t equals zero. Sorry, at, at t equal t naught, we're taking an arbitrary time. It doesn't have to be t equals zero. Okay, then we, so that's true for any, for a, for a small enough interval of time. Then we have to ask the question, for how long a time does that exist? We see that the solution could blow up in a finite amount of time. And that, but that's a separate issue that uh, we need to look at on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I have more details about the existence and uniqueness theory at, in this section, but we're not going to really need that in the course. We will develop all the aspects of that that we need in the context of specific examples and phenomena. So that's it for this lecture, and I will see you next time. Bye.